Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath. And no, no co-host today, Kostuba is not here today. He's in Pittsburgh and he just did a program last night at our good, our, 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 our uh, Zoomer, one of our Zoomer studios, um, uh, Zeb's Yoga Factory in Pittsburgh. But we have special, special, double special guest today, which I'm not going to announce yet because we've got a, little, a few announcements first, but we have special guests today. You're going to be excited for today's show. I'm super excited for today's show. Um, before we start, we just have a couple announcements. I'm announcing my India pilgrimage for October 16th through the 28th. We are going to Varanasi. We're going to Udaipur. We're going to Nathwar. We're going to Rishikesh, home of the yogis, and uh, on the river Ganga. And then, of course, we're going to Vrindavan and Govardhan. Um, also, Nepal. Pilgrimage is happening 13th through 25th, trekking through the Himalayas. This is the third year in a row I've done it. It's an incredible trip just to have Darshan of the Himalayas. And we do hearing and chanting every day in the morning. And here comes Mara. Hi, Mara. Hi, good morning. Yeah, you're late. That's okay. Thank you for your help. Um, and uh, yeah, March 13th to the 25th, both the pilgrimages I'm doing are on my website, Raghunath, R-A-G-H-U-N-A-T-H dot yoga. So check that out. Also, we want to say we have we're still running that um, deal for uh, Divya's incredible master class. It's 40 percent off. Uh, you go to. Um, I'll put the link on the board. There'll be a special link. To there the, the, there's a special link you can use. You can go to our Instagram page and go on our link tree on Instagram and you can get that. It's a 40 percent coupon code. It's a great way to study cooking, Ayurvedic cooking with for yourself or your family or just give it, give it as a gift. And if you use wisdom of the sages 15, that is the coupon code. You get 40% off of that course. Um, I also wanted to mention, um, I got a nice contact from one of our regular interviewees and one of my, one of my personal inspirations, um, Shama Sundar Prabhu, one of Prabhupada's first disciples. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to his three great books now that now you can get them as like a, a set. Yeah, yeah, it looks really nice. Like the artwork in it is beautiful. Mary, you're gonna have to stick your face more in this <laughs> microphone here today. It looks very nice. Was all I was saying. It would make a good gift. Yes, it's a great gift. It's uh, chasingrhinos.com. And you know I love Shama Sundar. He's such. I look at it like I want to be him. He's like a very out of the box devotee of Lord Krishna. He, there's nothing normal about him in every wonderful way. The way he like he really. He really just like spearheaded the Krishna consciousness movement by meeting the Beatles and traveling the world and just opening temples. And it, it was quite impressive. Everything, all the people that he came, uh, that he brought into contact uh, with Srila Prabhupada, the Acharya traveling the world. Speaking, anything else before I uh, dive into this beautiful interview? Uh, 
Uh, did you mention Yamuna Jelly and Happy Girl Kitchen? No, I did not. Don't forget Yamuna that. Jelly, one of our regular Zoomers and listeners. Yamuna Jelly, you can go to happygirlkitchen.com. She makes gourmet jams and jellies, and she is a full-on card-carrying devotee of Lord Krishna. And she's got an incredible following there in uh, Northern California and uh, throughout, the, throughout the world. And she does special order jams and jellies. Check out her website. But we do a special Wisdom of the Sages gift box. So if you want to give some transcendental, transcendental prashadam jelly to someone, there's a great chance. You go to Happy Girl Kitchen and you use the coupon code WISDOM and you'll get 10% off that. And there's a special, what do you, you get like a Bhagavad Gita? You get jellies and you get a Bhagavad Gita and like a small book and some incense, something yeah. like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, somebody was just posting a photo on Discord. They've already received their Wisdom of the Sages gift box. Okay. So. So, yeah, and, or you can send it to a friend. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, man, why did you get me a Bhagavad Gita? I don't want to read a Bhagavad Gita. You're going home for Christmas and you're handing out Bhagavad Gita's to your family and they're like, come on, give them jelly. Everybody loves jelly. Who doesn't love jelly? Who doesn't love jelly, right? So if you have a person, if you have a person on your list that you can't give a Bhagavad Gita to, then you just give them jelly. It makes so much sense. Or pickles. Or pickles. They have, yes, they have happy, they have pickles in Happy Girl Kitchen. Okay, without any further ado, you know, I ha- want to introduce these two great guests. Now, usually in Bhakti, we have some story that sh- got us here. You know my story. I was in a rock and roll, I was in a punk rock band traveling around, and whatever s- success <clears throat> I had in the material world did not fulfill me. My father died unexpectedly, and all this pressure drove me on a spiritual path and every one of you listening to the show was probably brought here by some type of shifting you know how the earth shifts the plates or something and causes like an earthquake there's some shifting going on in your life that's bringing you to a spiritual uh, a spiritual resolve and so um uh we want to welcome Banu Nandini she's been on a walk on Wednesday before she had an incredible um uh, an incredible, you know, backstory about her coming to Bhakti growing up in, a, you know, a civil war in Yugoslavia, right, in in Bosnia and watching tragedy happen like right around right around her. But then there's this other person, this incredible person we're bringing on today. His name is Krishna Murari Goswami, a beautiful friend of mine from Brindavan who didn't. Get to the bottom of this, Krishna Murari. It's not like you said, okay, I need a Krishna, uh, I need a Krishna um, calling. Krishna Murari Goswami grew up in a family of Goswamis, a family of priests in Vrindavan who have been worshiping Krishna in Nandagram. That's where Krishna and Balaram grew up. And so we're going to pick his brain, what it's like to grow up. Not just like in America, I grew up in a Hare Krishna temple, but actually from a family lineage who's been worshiping Krishna as their little boy for generations. And we're going to pick these two brains today and find out what makes them tick and why are they so inspirational to me on my bhakti path. So welcome, Banu Nandini. First, welcome, Banu Nandini. Hari Bol. Hari Bol, everyone. And Um, she's... She's live in Germany right now. She just got back from Dubai and Vrindavan with her guru, His, Holy, His Holiness Sachinandana Swami. Well, Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Raghunath. Thank you, Mara. Thank you, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, still a little bit jet lagged and uh, my heart and my subtle body are still in Vrindavan. And I hope it, they will take time <laughs> before they return fully. <laughs> right. Now, um, and I just want to say good morning to Krishna Murray Goswami because I don't want to sound rude. Um, I'm going to ask you to unmute Goswami G. How are you? Welcome to the show. Radhe 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 Shyam Raghunath Ji. Thank you very much for for having us over in this beautiful podcast. Thank, uh, thank you very you. much, and, everyone. And Hare Krishna Radhe Shyam. Where, where are you right now? I am right now in Govardhan town. In You're in Govardhan town. Ah, I feel like you're bringing me there just to hear this. 
um, we just came back from India, um, uh, Mara and myself, and we were uh, with both of these great souls. And we were wandering through Varshana. That's where Radharani grew up to different holy places. And I'm going to ask you about that in a, mo a moment. He, you're from Nandagao or Nandagram, yeah. right? From and Nandagram, yeah, yeah. Nandagram. What's the difference between Nandagao and Nandagram? Actually, uh, the Sanskrit uh, name is Gram, means for a village, and the Hindi uh, word for a village is Gaon. Oh, Gaon. I get it now. I get mm -hmm. it now. And so he, he, he lives and, and his family takes care of the deities of Krishna and Balaram. And I'm going to ask you some questions about that. But before we get into your incredible story, and by the way, these two, Banu and Krishna Murari Goswami, they're like brother and sister. They have this incredible relationship for many years, like brother and sister. And um, when I get around them both, I feel like uh, part of their family. So thank you for both being here today. And they're both working on this very incredible sort of mission with their guru, Sachinandana Swami, um, and, uh, which is this beautiful retreat center at Govardhan Hill. Banu, before you start telling us about that can you just tell us again and i know you did this before but it's such like a it's such like a moving story about your 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 childhood and um the you know it, it, externally it's trauma but you, you, the way the spin that you've put on it is it, it it's sort of like a gift of pain that brought you to a higher place you, you want to explain your your background banu <clears throat> yes, so um, I was born in formal Yugoslavia, and um, I was growing up in a very beautiful way. I had, the, for me, the most beautiful childhood, playing with many kids, learning many things. And I was basically growing up in a country where different ethnicities lived together, mm -hmm. and they were called the South Slavic people. So um, the politics at that time was that there is no difference between us. We're all the same. And I know as kids, we were also taught in school that we need to greet all our neighbors. We need to be kind to each other. We even have to give some vows. We were called the pioneers, uh, the pioneer generation. So when we would go to school, we had to give vows that we would be good citizens and you know respecting each other and so on. Mm -hmm. So I was nine years old when all of a sudden um, I was to go to school the next morning. And then while going to school, I saw so many um, just so much military on the streets and bunkers, you know, people with huge guns. And of course, it was very scary because I was a child. I didn't know what was going on. So basically, it was in my understanding, in my perception, just in one night, everything turned around. And then um, electricity cut, water cut. You have nothing to eat. You have to run, you know, for your life. You have to hide. You have to. Uh, my sister was three years old at that time. So my mother, my sister and I, we stayed and yeah, we had to hide in different um, cellars of different people's homes, you know. And then my mother, she used to go to the UN every day with my sister. She didn't want to take me because she felt um, if something happens, at least one of us survives. <laughs> oh my God. Even though for me, this was the most tragic thing because they would shoot people on the street, right, who were walking. So she would leave me behind. She had to go with the sister because she was too small and she was going to the UN and asking each day if they can get us on a bus and just get us out of the country in a protected way. So uh, after many weeks of going there and, you know, waiting in queues the entire day, she got a call and it was, um, uh, you know, she came home and she said, Peck, whatever you have, we have to run. So I remember we just took two small bags, you know, plastic bags of like what, like something that you can just like for a night or so, because you don't even know where you're going. And uh, we just had like a little piece of bread that we could take with us. And then we, lo we entered this bus and this bus started to go to leave the country. And then all of a sudden it stopped because the neighboring country, which was Croatia at that time, they didn't want to let us in as refugees because they had to clarify certain things in a political way. So we were in this no man's land and oh. the politicians were deciding whether they will let us pass and then we are kind of free or if they don't let us pass, then we will return and then we have to go to concentration camps. 
Oh. So this was really a night, I'm telling you, like, and I had, you know, my mother and my sister, and <laughs> then I started to pray to God very, very intensely, because intuitively, you just look for shelter, and all your shelters are gone, like, overnight, and then all the shootings and this and that, so I really felt I need to find that place of security, and I started to pray and pray and pray. And I promised God, if he takes us out alive, I'm going to become a follower and, and a very spiritual, religious person. That was my promise. I was nine years old, imagine. And wow. I never heard anything about God consciousness before because my parents grew up in former Yugoslavia. They were in a socialistic, communistic country. They grew up in that way. They never taught me anything about spirituality. Wow. But boom, there it was. And so... You know, after many hours of waiting, we were eventually, you know, let to enter the country. Mm. And then we moved on to Vienna. And this is where I grew up. And I never forgot this promise. And uh, something which would have been the most traumatic experience for me, uh, that's what we shared, turned to be uh, like, I don't know how to express this, but you know, when you as a child have this samskara, this impression that everything can be gone in a second, you can just lose it. Mm. So when I was growing up, you know, whatever, you know, my classmates were doing or my friends, I always said this in the back of my mind, you know, okay, now I have this, but I may lose it. So when I came to the point of choosing, you know, what I'm going to study, uh, because this is going to define my life and my career, I had a big problem because I didn't know, because I felt I'm interested in all these things, but what really makes, uh, does matter, you know, what is really of essence, what is like going to be there forever. So I started to visit a uh, therapist and I was 19 years old when I came to her and I said, I think something's wrong with me. And she said, why? And I said, why can't I just choose and live a normal life like everybody else? <laughs> so we talked and she said, no, you're pretty, you know, you're totally normal. It's just that you're looking for something spiritual. And so she gave me books to read, and this is how I discovered Bhakti eventually. Wow. And I just felt this is it. Yeah. The, what, a, uh, what, what a gift to have that um, tragedy, to yeah. understand at a young age that at any minute, everything that seems so secure like you're going to school, everything's normal, everything's good, life is good, your family's good, and then all of a sudden the rug gets pulled out from where you're standing. And mm. it's get a bag, get a piece of bread, and run for your life. And it's not former Yugoslavia. That can happen anywhere at any moment. And my head is deep in the sand. And I think part of a spiritual journey is not this spiritual bypassing where you feel like, um, uh, um, uh, that th this is something that's, I, I, I'm feeling, it, it's not to forget about the tragedies of life. They say that, that they sometimes work, spiritualists are accused of, oh, you're not facing reality. This is reality. Reality is at the forefront of your mind that you can lose anything at any moment. And how can that motivate your day-to-day -to, -day to make your day-to-day -day so substantial? Which I feel like you have, Manu. I really feel like you live a very substantial, you know, beautiful, connected life. And that's why I wanted you on the show today, too. I, I, I really feel like it's a, you're a shining example of how you can um, make lemons into a d d delicious um, lemonade. Um, and uh, you. you're, you're living that right now. Um, and um, before we go on, I, by the way. These guys live such different lives, but they're connected like brother and sister. I don't know why I asked them both on the show at the same day because they, they've got completely different stories. But I'm figuring somehow I'm going to ask Krishna to magically weave these stories together to make it cohesive. Um, uh, Kostuba, if he was on the show today, he'd have it expertly planned out in advance. I'm winging it today because um, that's how I roll here. Krishna Marari Goswami has a different backstory. And um, let me ask you, Prabhu, how many generations has your family been worshiping Krishna and Balaram? Uh, actually, uh, the family generations are, uh, date back to 788 years before. 
eight years before <laughs> one of That's our before Lord great... Chaitanya was there. Yeah, yeah. Before this many years before, uh, our great great grandfather, his name was Anand Ghan Goswami Ji. Mm. He got the he got the service. Uh, he, he established the like the proper service, and from him up till now it has been thirteen generations have passed. So I myself on the fourteenth generation of Goswamis worshiping Krishna and Balaram and the whole family since years and years. And we even have we even have all the written documents like who was his son and who was his son. <laughs> all these lineages, all generations are being written down. So I on on the on the fourteenth generation of Goswamis serving the deities there. Wow! And so um. Were you uh, trained in worshiping the deity from childhood? Actually, uh, you know, the, the system of worshiping the deities uh, is, uh, is very clearly defined. Hmm. When, a, when a child, you know, he uh, gets a birth into Goswami family. So the first thing which the Goswami families do is they go to, to the deities and they pray to the deities that Thank you very much for giving us one more servant in your family. Wow. More servant. <laughs> and uh, then uh, after a specific at the age of 12 or 13, we, see, we receive our Brahman threads just in front of Krishna Balram. And, you know, uh, there's a fire sacrifice there. And in the fire sacrifice, uh, usually it happens that the mother and father of the, of the child they do the ahutis. They they offer the offering, mm. but especially in, in our temple, in in place of our mother and father, Krishna Balaram are made to sit in in the sacrifice. They do this offering. Mm. So that is quite quite different from the whole world, because uh, they are like our mother and fathers, and we will be serving them. <laughs> hey, Bono, any questions you have for Krishna Murai Goswami too? You can always chime in. So then at that age, 12 or 13, you started worshiping the deity there? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, uh, there's a tradition that Krishna, they are at a very young age. So they like to be born. They are similar age friends. That's why the younger generations are, are encouraged more that you learn worshiping, you do worship to them, you dress them. Because you will know them better. Wow. <laughs> that is beautiful. Now, let me ask you a question, because in the West, the way we were taught about God was, you know, this was actually a common thing that I heard growing up. God will punish you. God is the punisher. God is like a, a really strict judge. God is a very strict um some will con you'll be condemned by wrong behavior. Um, and then we had to come to terms like, do I want to live with all this guilt and shame? And so often so many of us either turn away from God or they live with all this sort of like almost like a perverse sense of this this evil authority of God, or they have to sort of like re rebirth their conception of divinity. And sometimes people turn towards impersonalism where I am God or God is love, something like that. What was your did you go through a period of like, um, well, I, do I even believe in God or did you go through these struggles or is, um, it, it, can you it, can you explain how you accepted God? Like, how were you born again, so to speak? Or was there never even any question? How do you look at I, God? <laughs> Actually, the just 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 by our birth here in Vrindavan, and especially in in the family of servants to them, mm -hmm. so Krishna is never like a far living concept or a far living person. He's like a he's like a family member to whom you can relate like a like a person. So you know this concept. You know we then we have a different concept that he is he is like a family member. In the same way, like my father, if I do something wrong, he might chastise me, but he will not like, you know, kill me away or you know, do something which is really very, very bad for me. No, no, no. He, he is like a, like a good family member who wants us to improve if we, if we do bad and who appreciates, who appreciates us 
when we are really good to him mm. that's beautiful so like a like a family member <laughs> banu what do you think about this i mean it's like we it's almost like we have to work to develop that concept wouldn't it be great if we were born just doing that uh, well, if I can admit, um, this is the thing which attracted me to bhakti because I did research other religions and I, um, you know, looking for my path. And when I came to bhakti yoga, when I met the devotees, this was the first thing I felt here. We are talking about a God who is close. And, and I just knew this is me because I could not imagine or fathom, you know, a God sitting on a cloud and <laughs> looking for our mistakes and being happy in <laughs> writing them down in a book, you know, I, I, can't, I caught you, you did a mistake. Now I'm going to throw you into this hell or I just could not, you know, ever have this image of God. So, and when I came first time to Brindavan and uh, then I've, I, I felt I have to meet the bridge buses. I need to spend time with them. Uh, because they have this very much so, you know, and uh, yeah, this is how Love from Vrindavan came. Yeah, it's, it's very festive. Like everything is a festival. It's a festival. It's a song. It's a dance. Uh, the first time I went to your family house, you danced for us, Krishna Maharaji. <laughs> that was like incredible. <laughs> I was like, I need to learn how to, I think I, I'm telling Mara this too. I think if I want to advance in bhakti, I got to learn how to dance. I think I really, <laughs> I think Krishna would like be happy if I learned how to dance and I really can't. It's one of my many shortcomings, Prabhu. How did you learn how to dance? Did you go to Actually, dances? No, no, no. It, it, you know, every in Vrindavan, every word is a song. Every step is a dance. <laughs> so, you know, each, each festival, each, uh, each day, which is considered like a, like a festival in Vrindavan, so one one can dance only when he's like super happy. Even it's it said in, in psychology, like you can dance only when you are like 200% happy. So, <laughs> you know, every day in Vrindavan, which is like a festival. So during festival, it's, it's lots of dancing, lots of happiness, lots of service. And, you know, that's how, you know, just by being here, you learned how to dance. Yeah. Krishna Murari, he, you invited me one time to uh, come for Holi to Vrindavan, if you remember. Holi mm -hmm. is a very uh, special celebration where all Vrindavasis are looking forward to this festival because they are for 40 days, you know, boiling the atmosphere, so to say, rising the temperature. And then in two days, I mean, Raghu, you should, you should go one time and see this. There's so much dancing. And Krishna Murari is like the king of dancers. I must say this. <laughs> he's not he really just dancing. Is. He is quite a, he's quite a dancer. Okay, so maybe we could talk a little bit about Holi because it's such a big festival in India. Is that this is also called Doliatra? Yeah. Doliatra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I'll, let me explain you about you know many people have different concepts about Holi, but you know it's 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 really different in Vrindavan. The, the origin of Holi is from two different yugas. The first origin of Holi is from the Sat Yuga, where Hiranyakashipu, when he tried to kill Prahlad Maharaj, so a sister of Hiranyakashipu, her name was Holika. Holika. She got, yeah, she got a boon from Brahma that she had a chadar, she had a cloth. If she would wear it and she would sit in the fire, then the fire will not burn him. So she told Hiranyakashipu that if I sit with Prahlad in the fire using that cloth, I will not get burned and the Prahlad will get burned. But at that time, what happened? The Holika himself, he got, she got burned, but Prahlad Maharaj was saved. So in that yuga, every, every peop, uh, the people considered it this, uh, this moment as a, as a celebration of victory of, of the demon of the, of the good is victory of Prahlad Maharaj over the evil, over evil Holika. So mm. the ashes which were part of the body of Holika, everyone took those ashes and they threw it in the air. So it mm. was like a festival of Holi mm. for them. Ah, I get it. Okay, so that's so one of the is, stories. The festival this is one throwing of the, the ashes yeah. of Haranyakashipu's sister. Okay. Yeah. Now comes the another festival. The okay. Another festival 
uh, origins from Vrindavan, which is said to be Vasant Uttav, which is like a festival of spring, the spring Vasant festival. Vasant Utsav. Utsav is uh, yeah. like a whole uh, a fest festival. Yeah, 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 festival. And Vasant, festival. Vasant is the yeah. you know they have six six seasons, spring. um, and so that's the that, that's the season of springtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during the month of spring, uh, the Mother Nature, all the all the nature itself comes up with many many different colors like there are blossoming flowers yellow green red you know the the whole nature looks like vividly colorful and the vividly colorful nature invites invokes krishna to enjoy all those colors and in that in that specific month uh, krishna was once challenged by kamadev cupid the god of love he was he challenged krishna that i want to fight with you then krishna said okay if you want to fight fight with me no problem what type of war you want to have with me mm. and he said oh krishna i don't know the types of wars but i want to fight with you and krishna explained to him there are two types of wars the first war is the war from the forts like one one army stands on one fort another army on one fort then they fight mm. and the another war is the war on the war field which is on on a plain surface then he said you know i have won many wars i want to have a real war on the war field krishna said okay come whenever you want so kamadev had this desire that he would enter when krishna would play during the month of holi with the gopis you know krishna plays really personally personally means krishna is taking uh, uh, colors and she's uh, he's coloring the gopis like anything Now, and if he people said that, aren't familiar with this, colors are there's colored powders, and yeah. um, they're either sprinkled, or they are put into a sort of like a uh, in America we call like a, a super soaker or squirt gun, like a little water yeah, pistol, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. they make colored water come out. Okay, uh, Prabhu, continue. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, so that uh, uh, actually uh, that was the month of Holi. It is said Jag Hori Braj Hora. in in the whole world holi is very small everyone celebrate holi on one day but braj hora hora means very big which is like for 40 days so the festivity still includes uh, uh, you know preparations going for 40 days and starting on the day of vasant panchami which is like the first day we uh, you know uh, we have we start singing those songs of holi different songs of holi Which, oh, are, which are like invocations. Banu, Banu, let's petition Krishna Murari Goswami to sing us a song. Will you, do you have a holy? Do you, now you you can't even hear these songs unless you go to Brindavan, unless you go to Nandagram. You are what I've found out about you, my friend, is you are a treasure chest of secret Brindavan songs. Will you please share a holy song with us? It is. Uh, it is said. आज बेरज में होरी रे रसिया आज बेरज में होली रे रसिया होरी रे होरी रे होरी रे रसिया आज बेरज में होरी रे रसिया कौन गाम के कुंवर कन्हैया लाला It, and the song is expressing that holy hai holy hai holy hai means today is holy holy in braj and from which village comes krishna then everyone says from the village of nandagram comes krishna and from which village comes shrimati radharani everyone says from the village of varsana comes shrimati radharani and then they play holy and uh, for these long 40 days uh, you know we we sing those specific songs about how krishna is playing holi on different different days uh, and spe especially the colors the powder color which you mentioned about and the in the in the in the water color which mm. we still use in, in every year's holi is very natural dating back from that same time of krishna we have a special quality of flowers the name of flower is teshu you if you just take 1 kg of flowers and dip them for two nights in water 
with one kg of flowers, you can make like 300 liters of natural, natural watercolor. Wow. We should do that, Banu. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I just want to butt in for one second. I find it. I found it when I first went to uh, India. Um, I was really into sort of like, you know, health food and fasting and things like this. So um, there were so many delicious foods I've never had before um, cooked and offered with love, the, the Prashad. And I think, well, you know, now I'm going to do a fast for one week. I'm just going to fast. And then all of a sudden they were like, well, tomorrow is a festival. You can't fast tomorrow. It's a big festival. And I was like, OK, I'll start the next day. And then I would try to fast again. They're like, oh, no, 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 today's a festival today. There's like so many festivals. It's like there's I was th thinking there's so many holidays in for, for Vaishnavas, for devotees. Like, when do you have time to work? Like there's every day is a holiday. Practically, the calendar is just peppered like even the festivals we celebrate in America at the temples that in the Western world in Germany and New York. We there's a lot of there's a lot of festivals. But when you hang out in holy places like where you're from, Nundagram, there are so many festivals. I don't even know how it's like your whole life becomes a festival. And maybe that's what life is supposed to be. Maybe life is supposed to be a festival glorifying Krishna and Balaram. And maybe we just have the we, we're just disconnected, Prabhu. And um, so I want to understand if Holi is celebrated on two days, what do you mean 40 days building up? First of all, we barely even celebrate Holi in America. Occasionally there's like a big Holi party and they have kirtan and they throw colors. But tell me about the 40 day build up for this holy festival in the spring? Actually, uh, you know, the elders in the family, they uh, they tell us to drink healthy drinks like almond milk and take ghee so that we become really, you know, we have, uh, we can have lots of strength for the, for the month of holy. This is like a practical preparation. This is practical preparation. Another preparation is like uh, the younger generation of Goswamis they are taught how to uh, how to sing songs, how to play different drums. You know, like we have like big big drums which we play. So the uh, older generation teaches us, the younger generation, how to sing those songs and how to carry you know carry forward that legacy which we are keeping with a with different generation. So they really teach us to to take these songs, learn them, sing them, and then being together and especially. Every single day on the evening from seven o'clock in the in the evening till nine o'clock till the Shine Aarti for two long hours, the whole congregation means the whole village Goswami, they sit in front of Krishna Balaram and they sing those songs of Holi describing different pastimes which Krishna and Balaram are doing in the month of Holi. And even on the Shine Aarti, you know, on the on the final Aarti when Krishna is about to go to sleep. It's, uh, usually it's like we have to be very peaceful because the Lord is going to sleep. But in Nandagram, on the, during the month of Holi, we bang, we literally bang the big drums, even on the final Aarti. That, oh Krishna, you have to have that enthusiasm for Holi. You know, we are in the month of Holi. So singing those songs, specific, singing these, uh, these traditions together with us is like the preparation for Holi, which goes for 40 days. And those for those two final days, we play the, the exact festival of Holi. OK, before we get into what happens on those last two days, um, Mara, I mean, what do you think about this? This is like here we have um, you're, you're with your you're with little children, you're with old ladies, you're with your parents, right? It's it's every generation is there. Yes. Two hours every night. Yeah. I when I was growing up, after dinner, during Lent, before Easter, we used to sit there and chant rosary um, after dinner. That was what we did. Did you know that? I'm from a pretty religious family. We would chant rosary every day. But it was not festive. It was sort of like sad. I, I, I'm not trying to put it down. It was just sort of like grave. and Because you're preparing for, I guess you're preparing for the... I guess you're preparing for the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. 
So it was sort of like, uh, it was just sort of like holy and grave, not holy like the holy festival, H O L I. It was H O L Y, not H O I. But let me ask you a question. Do you know what Netflix is? Yes. You do. Okay. I'm just checking in, checking in. Actually, you live in a remote actually, village. I know. Actually, I, I, I know because. Uh, last year, uh, there was a group of photographers from Mumbai. They are working for Netflix. They are making a video on Holi. They came to Nandagram. And they are like Netflix is making a, a video series, which is like Festivals of India. They came to Holi and they have interviewed me for a for a video like, like a main storyteller for their video for Holi. Like oh. what really is Holi? So they wow. have interviewed me and. Maybe in, in on this upcoming Holi or or maybe later they will publish a whole video about Nandagram and Bursana Holi, starring wow. me as a main storyteller for them. That is beautiful. You are the person to tell the story. I'm so happy. They they may got... I add something. Here? Yeah, Prabhu. Yes. Um, so we are now listening to Krishna Murari Goswami telling us with so much passion and enthusiasm about this festival which is so um yeah they love it they they're looking up for it but it's really not only about like a folk festival about something that a culture does somewhere in india in an exotic village or a few villages and here what happens is that vrindavan is a holy dam it's not only a holy place it is really the place where god appeared and played five thousand years ago krishna and he is still playing there in his unmanifest pastimes. So whatever the local residents, the Brijabasis do in Vrindavan is very much in connection with the spiritual reality and why they sing the songs, why they do the festivals, why they do the dance, why they throw the colors. They're so to say connecting with that reality and they're really trying to you know, transform our consciousness from being here you know, to bringing it to a spiritual, elevated place so it's not only a festival in a sense of like let's celebrate let's have a great party but it is something very spiritual you know there's yeah. something also about being not sitting back and being entertained because it is entertaining but you're also part of the entertainment and when yes. uh, it, it, it's like being in the stands watching the football game or being on the field there's a difference but uh when to, there's something I feel like culture has lost when we just, okay, let's all get together and watch TV together. That's how I grew up. We all get together and watch TV together. And now it's not even like that. It's very disconnected. Oh, this kid wants to watch this show on his device. This kid wants to watch his show. Mom and dad want to watch this. Actually, mom wants to watch that. It's, it's, it's there's, there's no connection. It's like our culture is deteriorating and it's so beautiful to see the uh, the origins of coming together in the evening time like this, because it's not like it's holy. And what we do specifically gearing up our mind for the springtime festival, but I'm sure there's evenings where you come together for evening arities anyway, where you sing together and, uh, and you know, we could do a whole thing with Krishna Murari going through the festivals of the year. So, mm -hmm. okay. But, but, but moving on now, it seems like, from what I understand, and I'm very, you know, uneducated in this, but Barshana, which was where Radharani grew up, is very close. And Nandagram is very close. There are two neighboring villages where Krishna and Balaram grew up. But it seems like there's this playful, sweet rivalry between the villages. Can you explain holy for the, the, the devotees from Vrindavan? I'm sorry, from Nandagram and holy for the devotees from Varshana. How, do, how does that relate? Actually, the, um, I would say this um, without any hesitation that Nandagram and Varshana are, are, a, are a great symbol of togetherness. These mm. two villages are, are the greatest ever example of togetherness that still today, Although, uh, you know, Krishna and Radharani, they played their pastimes 5,000 years before, and but they still play in their pastimes here. But for these 5,000 years, these two villages have 
always stayed together in 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 different different ways all the festivals which we celebrate throughout the whole year we celebrate them them together although there is some sense of rivalry means like a little competition is there but but we are we are together on the day of holi like on the one day before holi the gopis from varsana they come with a with a pot of color like a invitation like a symbol of invitation from the side of shrimati radha rani to krishna balram that tomorrow this is your invitation and tomorrow you come to play holi in our village then krishna and balaram they decorate themselves in in very fair, very fine clothes so this is one very nice example of how holi in nandagram and barsana is different from holi from outside mm. anywhere outside if you play holi you will play holi in the in the worst types of clothes you have you have if you have like like that <laughs> Like because t-shirt. you know you're about to ruin your clothing. If yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going out yeah. in holy. You're going to get colors on your clothes that you can't get them out. There's no amount yeah. of bleach yeah. or OxyClean that can get these colors yeah. out of your clothes. Yeah. So every way outside, you use the worst type of clothes, like the T-shirt or the shirt, which you, which you, which nobody will wear. You will wear that on that day and use them. But in Nandagram and Barsana, we use brand new clothes. Like I every single year i i have very fine new the very fine silk uh, color uh, of of kurta dhoti and yellow turban which is brand new everything brand new because mm. i am not going to something wild something foolish i am going to be a participant into krishna and balarams mm. and shrimati radharani's pastime which is so much higher so i have i am a participant into that so i have to wear the best what i have best what i have and we all do this we all wear the best which we have because it's said to us that on that day that golok vrindavan which is there up up in the skies comes down to this vrindavan wow and it it manifests here so it would be really bad of you if you use the bad clothes so this is one understanding that is the beautiful understanding banu right this is the idea it's like i'm not just here yeah for some material the- festival it's going to be fun i'm i'm going to yeah. play around we're going to throw colors it's actually i'm with Radha and krishna now i'm going to yes. it, it's a different type of consciousness i'm not just here for this experience this crazy indian festival it's like i'm actually with Radha and krishna in their stomping ground yeah yeah banu, and, you, and and have you we been have, there also we, Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, she she was there. She was there once. Mm. How how was it? Yeah, for you, I've Bono? been I, I've been there, and I must tell you. Can I do I have a little time to say something? Please. Like okay, so I went that year to Vrindavan with uh, my sister, and as it so comes, sisters or brothers, you know, siblings sometimes they disagree about things. So we had a plan to go Did and they? celebrate <laughs> to to celebrate Holy in Varshana. And, you know, like externally seen, there's thousands and thousands of people coming from all over India. It's crazy. Usually you don't just go there and celebrate. You need to know where you're going. So my Mm. sister, a few hours before we were to go, she tells me like, I'm not going. You know, we had like a little disagreement about things. And I was like, oh my God, don't say this now because I so badly want to go. And she's like, no, I'm so sorry. And the only thing I knew was I have to surrender to Radharani's plan. This is how we say this in Vrindavan, right? You're really trying to practice surrender. So here I come, you know, Krishna Murari Goswami, we were supposed to meet the next day and he was somewhere in Nandagram. He was getting ready. It was very wild. And I was on this rickshaw, you know, going towards Varshana and praying like, what will happen? How will I celebrate? And then there is masses of people, masses of people. And to cut the story, the story short, um, such doors were open to me just because I surrendered, because I gave up my fear, because I went there with the spiritual aspiration. Mm. Raghunath, Mara, believe me, I had the experience of my life, spiritually seen, because Krishna Murari, he gave me all this information, like, you know, Radha and Krishna coming here, they're playing with us. So I was going really, like, transcending all that madness, at least with my mind, and something amazing happened. And these things you can really experience with your heart. 
You know, you're standing in this madness, but you are feeling it's chaotic, it's loud, it's wild, but you are feeling so connected to Radha and Krishna. And you're just praying, like, let me experience this again and again and again. I just want to feel this. I want to be here. Yeah, it is something very special. You know, we spent a lot of this show talking about holy. We didn't even get to John Mastami, Krishna's appearance day. <laughs> I can't imagine what John Mastami is like that. You want to give us a little taste of that, Murari Ji? Actually, actually, John Mastami is celebrated in 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 such a such a deep way that how it it happens you know how it it took in krishna's past time like uh, just 10 minutes before when krishna was uh, about to appear brahma started his stuti brahma started glorifying krishna the devatas start glorifying krishna and uh, the this same schedule is still till today followed in in our temple and you know how uh, when a mother gives birth to a son to a baby she she has a she has a specific dress like her head is tied mm. you know with a cloth so that you know the mother who is giving birth you know it is said that she has lot of headache when she is giving birth so even to the deities you know we have mother yashoda we tie the head of our mother yashoda <laughs> and 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 when little krishna is born we give him like that type of dress, which is like a, you know, like a baby cap. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not given that big crown or big flute or something. He's given that, you know, like a pregnancy cap, which a small baby has over his head. And he's decorated in, in that, that way that, you know, he is a, he's a small, simple boy. And then we sing of, of, of about the beggars, you know, there are different, different beggars who are coming to the house of Nanda Maharaj and asking for, you know, for whatever they, they wanted to have. And we, are, uh, we also dress Nanda Maharaj, who was at the age of 90 years when he received Krishna as a son. So a 90-year-old man, he decorates himself just out of great happiness that he has got a son after such a long time. So we even put a kajal you know, we, we, we put Kajal in his Kajal eyes. Kajal is like mascara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black mascara. And we give him beautiful yellow crown. He's so happy, so happy, so happy <laughs> that he has opened up all the storehouses which he had that anybody who comes can take whatever he wants. Wow. You know, I festi- am... <laughs> Prabhu, go the festival, The festival is so happy, so happy and happiness along with keeping up the traditions that is really you know you can be happy from outside or from the atmosphere but although keeping the traditions and knowing all your values and then being happy it it, it it's like you know adding fragrance to the gold <laughs> it's like adding fragrance to the gold uh krishmar goswami ji thank you so much for joining us um Whoops. Here we go. Banu Nandini, thank you for joining us. Um, you can s- follow these guys on uh, Instagram, Super Soul, in- Super Soul Spired or Inspired? Spired. Super Soul Spired. That is um, uh, Banu Nandini and KM Goswami is Krishnamari Goswami. Follow them and their adventures. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys soon. And I could go on and on with you guys for hours, but we have limited time on the show. Will you please come back, please? Of course. Yeah. And, and, and you. Course. Raghu, uh, we should celebrate Holi at Super Soul, but we should do it really nice, not just like a wild festival. I think like a wildness should be there, but I, you know, we should really do something like I'm unique. In. I'm amazing. in. Let's do it. Let's go. And let's, let's get Krishna Morari Goswami to come visit us sometime. And- and I can I can I can bring flowers and I can I can tell you the, the exact ways. The what? <laughs> you can show us I can make the flowers. flowers from the yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're excited, Prabhu. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thank these very, very special guests. Stay connected with them. We're looking forward to seeing you in Vrindavan soon. Bananandini is a sage group leader. I don't know if your sage group is filled, it's probably filled. But you're very beloved on this group uh, with our Wisdom of the Sages community, Banu. And um, 
Yes, I just seeing you. Be- just seeing you guys is uh, bringing me to Vrindavan. Thanks for all the service you're doing at the new Govardhan, um, Govardhan Retreat Center at Govardhan Hill. Not to be confused with the GEV, but the Govardhan uh-huh. Retreat Center at Govardhan Hill. Thanks for everybody for joining us today. Howdy Thank, you, Thank, you, Thank, Thank you, Raghu. Thank you, Mera. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you, Raghu. you should show us your dancing now. Do some play. dancing, like Mr. Marari. Do some yeah, dancing. Show us. You know, it's it's like this, it's like this, it's like this, and for teasing, it's like this. Radhe. Radha Shri Radha Shri Radha Maru Jan Radha Shri 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 Radha Shri